Hello folks, welcome to the Darktable Landscapes video. Now in this one I'm going to be looking at some more punchy black and white processing. It's been a while since I've done black and white, so why not? The image on screen uh, I have at the moment is mainly to illustrate the kind of image that I specifically avoid doing any kind of black and white processing on. And that's mainly because of the the kind of the amount of fine detail that's going on here. You can see here this is up in the Highlands in Glen Affric. Uh, we've got some moss, we've got lots of heather. Uh, Scots pines and all that kind of thing. Lots of fine detail. And at the moment, we can see, for example, that this is heather because the purple flowers really make it stand out. But as soon as you make this kind of image black and white, and obviously this is a very low contrast black and white, I'll grant you that, all that kind of colour information disappears and this just becomes a grey kind of mass, a melange of, of kind of weird tones that you can't really make anything from. So when I'm looking at black and white processing, I prefer... Uh, more uh, bold shapes. The last one I did, for example, was uh, mountains. I'll link to that one. Just a simple kind of almost portrait of some rugged mountains. Very low in terms of kind of detail. Um, and what I'm going to do today is a couple of shots from Sky. And this is a much more kind of graphic uh, shot. We've got blocks of tone, not too much fine detail. And I find this works much better when you're looking to make a black and white photo. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with this one is some exposure. Let's see where we get. So we'll just stretch out our histogram. I'd like to make the sky more or less white in the actual black and white. Another thing I always like to have with black and whites is some blacks and some whites. I don't like kind of grey black and whites. I think it's there to enhance contrast, lets you really push contrast. So I'm going to make the sky as white as I can. And then we'll really deepen these shadows and get some good kind of graphic shapes going on. So I think that's fine for exposure. And I'm going to make a new uh, instance of color calibration with a right click here. Go to the gray tab and then pulling up the channels here will let me kind of fine tune the uh, black and white conversion. And this is just the initial phase if you like. We're going to do a lot more. Uh, contrast adjustment with the tone equalizer in due course. I think that's fine. We'll go to sigmoid, just boost the contrast, little stretch out the histogram. I'll give a little raise of blacks just for the fade effect. I wouldn't do this when I was printing. That's fine. And now let's go for let's go for the tone equalizer, which is a great tool for black and whites. So you can really hone in on the tones. So we'll go to our masking tab. We will click our magic wands to make sure our exposure mask is in the right place. And then we can start adjusting. So I'd like to darken kind of this, this tone especially. Get some three dimensionality in there. And brighten these ones. Brighten that sky. Okay, and maybe drag this one down a bit as well, I think, yeah. It's good. I quite like to uh, really enhance the three dimensionality of this hill here. So I will use a mask, I think, to do that. Let's have a look at that one. Make a new instance of tone equalizer. We'll do our masking again, our exposure masking that is. And then we'll use, let's do drawn on parametric in case we need to do some fine tuning with the parametrics. So we use a drawn mask, a line down where the light is naturally falling. Just draw roughly around the shape. There we go. And just a little bit of fine tuning here. Let's check our mask, so we'll pop it on. Give it more feather. We will reduce our mask up, I think. Maybe a touch, not too much. And then maybe just make sure we're not affecting our brightest tones by pulling in there a little bit. There we 
go. So we're not going to be affecting this kind of bank of fog here and that kind of thing, which may be a little bright now that I look at it again. We'll adjust that in a moment. Okay, so now we can just, just work this a little bit more. We'll turn off our mask preview and then we can roll in here. Maybe just adjust our smoothing so we can do some more localized stuff. There we go, not too much, just a subtle enhancement of just that spot. That's fine. Just go back to my first tone equalizer again and just see if we can just tone that down a little bit. Yeah, it's slightly better, a little less luminous. Okay. And I'd like to just darken this corner and I think we could probably get away with a normal vignette. We don't need to do any kind of extra uh extra kind of exposure shaping with this one so let's do a vignette for now grab an ellipse shift and roll to change that feather amount and invert the shape so now we're affecting everything outside here and let's drop our exposure Needs more feather, I think. It's a little obvious where that oval end starts and ends, but that's fine. We're kind of enhancing the light that's there. Make sure we're not darkening this little loch anna too much. I think what wouldn't go mess with this one actually is kind of a, a kind of a cinematic crop. Let's go for crop. And let's use say a 16 by 9, a kind of a widescreen, or even just widescreen. There we go. Yeah, that worked quite well. So you can see how much contrast we've added with that tone equalizer. Maybe do some more kind of broad, broad strokes adjustments with the color balance RGB, a little more general contrast. We can fine tune things here. What I'd like to do is maybe pull down our highlights here. Then what I'd like to do is grab another instance, go for parametric mask, and see if we can just select our sky and just boost our sky, our sky sky, as it were. Further that back, there we go. And we'll switch this to drawn and parametric and stick a gradient on there as well, so we're not affecting this mist. Okay, then we can just boost our highlights here in the sky. Just a bit. Gone from that kind of slightly gray to white. Still kept some detail here for depth. That's fine. Little corner piece here maybe is a touch too dark we can maybe pull back some detail from that let's go to our tone equalizer again and just maybe bump it back touch just to get a little more texture in there yeah, you can see some rocks appearing too much we don't want it to distract it's kind of in the in the corner of the frame we don't want it to kind of pull the eye away but just a little bit of texture in there won't hurt at all And now I think uh, we can do some local contrast. So diffuse and sharpen, right click for the presets. Let's do local contrast fast. It's pretty good. And we may as well do our sharpening while we're here. So no AA filter demosaicing and lens deep blur soft. This is a pretty sharp lens. I think that's pretty good. So here's the before and after on this one. The, the kind of the natural contrast really created by a low sun. This is just after sunrise. And kind of that more cinematic crop, I think, helps it a lot. There's a lot of empty sky here just because it's 
uh, rising mist and the, the sky is quite diffuse. So I think just getting rid of the extra blank white space doesn't hurt that at all. And now what we can do is have a look at some other images and we can see if we can just apply this pretty quickly with a few adjustments. So go back to my light table and uh, we'll copy the copy the history stack over here and we'll paste it onto this one of the old man of store we'll see how this works for this one as well i think the first thing to do is remove the crop i don't think the crop works so well on this one that's fine and let's have a look at our vignette position it's not bad I'm just going to turn off my diffusion sharper modules here to improve performance while I do some other adjustments. So let's have a look at uh, tone equalizer. We'll turn off our localized tone equalizer because obviously it's a different area. And we've got kind of less variance in tones here, actually. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see what we can do to drop these shadows. Definitely whiten the sky. I think. Given the, the difference here in this kind of where, where the light's obviously hitting, I think it might be worth actually making some adjustments locally. Um, so I'll keep this one. I'm going to make a new instance. Again, do the exposure masking for it. Let's do gradient along the edge of the loch. And then we can kind of uh, fiddle around with things up here without destroying shadows down where there's more contrast anyway. So. Let's turn off our shape. Choose our curve smoothing so we can give some more differences. There we go. Maybe a touch too bright there. I think we're kind of starting to get weird glowing around the edge, which we don't want particularly. And now the main difference problem we have here is there's a difference in exposure in the sky and the reflection of the sky, which is to a certain extent natural. You do lose some light when you're reflecting off things, uh, mirrors and the like. But this is a bit of a too, too stark a difference in my liking. So let's uh, fix that. We'll go back to our first tone equalizer and we'll pop a mask on this one as well. This time the other way. There we go. I think our vignettes may be a bit strong on this one because we've got a lot more sky involved. So let's just bring that up a little bit. And feather. It's fine. Let's really drop our dark tones in this one. nice and we'll go back to this one i think and maybe just see if we can get a little bit more detail in these darkest tones yeah and then we can turn on our diffuse and sharpens again and there we go let's add a frame to this one i think And I think we would probably still give a little bit more light in the sky here. It's uh, often a kind of a process of push and pull, really. Um, we do have our color balance RGB still on, actually, which is probably not helping things. So let's turn that off. For that one, go for this one here. Uh, the highlights up. There we go. It's more like it. Okay, so there's our two finished images. As I said right at the start, I think the, the most important factor for black and white is the starting image in the first place. Nothing too detailed. If you've got bold kind of graphic shapes that you can make use of, uh, even to the point of, say, silhouettes, 
Uh, you'll get better results than if you've got kind of a very finely detailed uh, shot. Uh, if you've got contrasty light, maybe just after golden hour rather than golden hour itself, uh, so much the better as you'll get natural contrast and that kind of helps guide where you can do your processing to enhance it. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, do like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you on the next one.